Good morning. We want to thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Larry Taylor. I'm the chairman of the Republican Caucus in the Texas Senate. And we are here today to bring forth some, some updates on where we are and what we can do uh, here in Texas for the people of Texas. You know, the, so far in this special session that was called by the governor, the Senate has accomplished and passed every bill on that call. And it passed it over to the Senate. Unfortunately, our colleagues in the House could not receive those bills because there's not a quorum. And it is very disappointing. Not only is it a waste of money, time, and effort, it's also causing people of Texas not to receive some of the benefits that would have been received from those bills that we have been able to pass those. But there's still time for our colleagues in the, who are visiting D.C. and advocating and lobbying up there to come back home and do the job they've been elected to do which is to serve the people of Texas right here in Texas and help us get these bills passed. Uh, I realize the time is short. Today is the third. This session is over on the sixth. Uh, probably not likely they're going to make it back. But we will have another special session. And they should be here to do the people's business that they were elected to do. Uh, and I, 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 I don't know when that call is going to be. I presume it's very quickly. I would imagine by next week we'll be back in session. So they have plenty of time to pack up, bring their T-shirts and souvenirs home, and let's get back to work. Uh, vacation time is over. You know, our House Republicans, who I've seen many of them here, I've got some here up on the stage, but our House Republicans have been here this whole time, during the summer, not vacationing. They've been here, having to be here on call, ready to go, and still here for the 30-day session, away from their family, their businesses, and the things they would normally be doing during this summer. So we thought we'd come together today as the House Republicans and the Senate Republicans to share our message together that we are united in getting these things done for the people of Texas. And with that, I'd like to turn over uh, the podium to the chairman of the Republican Caucus in the Texas House, Representative Jim Murphy. Well, thank you, Larry. And what a pleasure it is to stand with my colleagues from the Senate delivering a very important message to the people of Texas that says we're working and we're not finished. And we'll see just how much there's left in this session for us. Um, with these three days left, we recognize that uh, our colleagues, and thank you all for being out here today, uh, have been unable to do the work that you've done. And we appreciate your leadership and your diligence getting your bills done and ready for us to receive. We can't. Um, so let me just deliver a message that if you're a retired teacher and you wanted that 13th check and you can't, blame the Texas Democrats who walked off the job. If you're one of those people who wanted to help foster children and you're unable to do so, blame the Texas Democrats who failed to show up for work. If you're one of those people that uh, is in our law enforcement communities and you wanted bail reform addressed to stop the crisis that's occurring in our cities, you can blame the Texas Democrats who refused to show up for work. In no other industry on earth can you fail to show up for the job for 30 days, get paid, and expect to keep the job. But that's what's happened. It's time to make sure the people of Texas know who has failed them in this special session. With that, I'd like to turn things over to Senator Nelson and Representative Bonin to talk about the specific bills mm -hmm. that are being killed by their absence. Yes, yes. Senator. Thank you. It is time for the House Democrats to come back to the state capitol and take care of the business of the state of Texas. Um, as chair of the Senate Finance Committee and Chairman Bonin, chair of House Appropriations, we can tell you that the economy in Texas has been doing so well that the Comptroller revised our revenue estimate. We have an additional $7 billion that we didn't know we were going to have at the end of session. And that money can be used for very important purposes that the Senate has already taken action on. We immediately got to work when we found out we had that additional $7 billion and did things like a 13th check for our retired teachers, property tax relief, funding to address the border crisis, and resources for many other important priorities. People have asked, well, why didn't you do that during session? That's an easy answer, because we didn't realize we would have enough money to do some of those additional things that we know now we're able to do. 
The House Democrats are in Washington, D.C. when they need to be here in Texas taking care of the business of Texas and helping our retired teachers, helping our, our, our elderly, our seniors need this property tax relief. We all need property tax relief. It is false and dishonest for anyone to suggest that this could have occurred during regular session. The only thing that's standing in our way right now of giving our retired teachers a check today is that a quorum is lacking in the House. There is still time. I am convinced that we are going to be coming back again and again and again until the Democrats in the House come home and take care of the business of the people of the state of Texas. And we can't wait, my friends. We need to take care of our business. So, and I'm sure that Chairman Bonin has additional comments he would like to add to. Well, thank you, Senator Nelson. And to follow up on uh, Senator Nelson's remarks, the budget landscape for the state of Texas has markedly improved since our last estimate. And it's not just a matter of realization, it's a matter of living within our means. And the comptroller is tasked with making a projection two years into the future as to what our projected revenues are. And each time we convene for a special session or a regular session, he updates that projection. And that is where the $7 billion materialized. So it wasn't even a question of realizing it. We flat out were told we were not allowed to go beyond a certain limit and that limit has been extended and now we have available revenues that were not available to the Texas legislature as recently as May of this year. In June alone, there were over 400 children who were forced to spend one or more nights in an unlicensed facility, sleeping in places like CPS offices, churches, and hotels. We have an opportunity in this special session to address that problem and we have proposed over $45 million per year for each of the next two fiscal years to help address that situation. The current situation is unacceptable and the time to act is now. The Texas House and Senate are working together to identify the resources that DFPS needs to ensure that our most at-risk children have a stable and safe environment. In addition to that, the legislature can very easily take care of Article 10 funding, which is important to our ability to continue operating. That could have already been taken care of. All we needed is the participation of our Democratic colleagues. All they have to do is show up for work, and that problem is solved. Finally, uh, the emergency items that were left undone as a result of this quorum break must be addressed. The legislature is poised to pass comprehensive bail reform that will limit bail in cases where a defendant is accused of a violent offense. Far too many times has an offendant been released after committing a violent crime only to go on and to murder someone. That is unacceptable. It should not happen in the state of Texas. We have the opportunity to address that and to fix that. We simply need our colleagues to come home and to do their jobs. And as you well know, election integrity remains at the forefront of the conversation. It should be easy to vote and hard to cheat, which is exactly what House Bill 3 does. We have worked diligently with our colleagues. We have received all constructive criticism and remain steadfast in our resolve that we will accomplish that goal. It will be and is easy to vote in the state of Texas, and we will make it as difficult as possible with real consequences for anyone who wants to attempt to cheat in any type of election. Texans deserve a uniform election code that provides a blueprint for consistency and fairness across all of the 254 counties in the state of Texas. And finally, Governor Abbott has stated very clearly that he will call special session after special session until our work is done, and I applaud him for doing that. And the Texas House and Senate, my Republican colleagues, we stand ready to deliver results for the people of Texas on these critical items. Thank you, Dr. Bonin. Uh, we've been here every day working, ready to work, and getting things ready. And if it means we have to come back for a next special session, we're committed to that as well. These are important things that need to get accomplished. And we hope that we will get this done in the next couple of days because the garage door will close and certain things like tax relief for seniors will be taken off the table and that would be a shame. We have spent over a million dollars of taxpayer funding 
for this session. And uh, while we're disappointed that the Democrats who walked off the job have caused that expenditure, we remain committed to achieving the results for the people of Texas, the ones who elected us, who elected us to come to Austin to accomplish their work. Uh, we want to get those bills passed in state law. That's our focus. Yes. Thank you for your good work. Thank you. Thank you to my colleagues from the House. Thank you, Senator Nelson, and to our colleagues. I see some senators out there with Senator Creighton. Uh, we are ready to get the people's work done. Whether it's the end of this special session, which is highly unlikely at this point with such a short uh, time frame to work with, but we will be back. And we are here from the Senate and the House to get the people's work done and get it done quickly and let's get back home to our families and to our business and let the people of Texas know they're being taken care of by their legislature and they're getting what they paid for. And with that, we'll be happy to take a few questions. Democrats have accused Governor Abbott of poisoning the entire process by vetoing legislative pay to take off a special session. Do you place any blame on, on the governor for vetoing legislative pay? Yeah, you, know, you can talk about that issue, but the fact is if they were here, that would be a non-issue. That, that he set a deadline for that, for even had that discussion, but we've had plenty of time to fix that, and we still have time to get that fixed, to get that done. So you can make the semantics of all that, but the fact is, if you're here doing your job, that's not even a question. So, the, uh, the, um, the governor sort of fixed an impasse in 2017 when he required, as part of the special session at that time, that y'all do sunset legislation first. It's just kind of about the machinery of governor, right? Like that, uh, like Article 10 is. Would you support him? Yeah, like you know, th that could very well be an olive branch. I don't know. Uh, that's up to the governor's office. Our job is that he puts things on the call. We take up those things on the call and we get them done. You won't say what, where you support that? I'm not going to get in the governor's business. I'm elected to be to represent my district, Senate District 11, You're in this Texas Senate. Right? Pardon? You're equal. Yes, equal you branches. Your, your but my job is not to do the governor's executive branch job. My job is to do the legislative job in the Senate and the governor, the special call, the special session calls are given to the governor in our constitution and he's the one that makes that call and decides what's on that. But I can assure you Article 10 will be taken care of immediately. We just got to get people back here to get them to work and get this. But there's a lot of people very concerned about that issue in the Capitol. It's not a big deal for the constituents back home. They don't quite understand all this, but these are people's jobs. This is what they do, and they do take care of the people. Well, we're not here in legislative sessions. There's a lot of work being done in this capital for people back home, constituent issues and things like that. These are important things that the people of Texas need to have taken care of. I tell you, my office, I will help those people. If that, if that ever came to that point, we would help pay those salaries to get that done. But that shouldn't have to be done. How would you do that? Out of my campaign. Is that what your contributors gave for? My contributors came, gave money for me to be a successful and effective legislator. And for me to do that, I have to have a great staff, and I'm very blessed with the people I have on my staff, and I don't want to lose a single one of them over an impasse like this. But that's, but once again, beyond the point. We're going to get the people's work done. We just need people to come back here where they're supposed to be in Austin, Texas, our capital. This is the only place where Texas work gets done is in Texas. And, and this is where it needs to be done. Well, first of all, I think if you, if you go by things that have been said about the elections bill, a lot of that is not correct. I wish somebody would have done a politifact on some of the statements that have been made. Secondly, this is what we do in the legislature. When you're here doing your work, you can bring up these points and we can talk about them, work through them, and it will actually come to, come to agree. I, I talk about this all the time. This is what we do in the legislature. We come together. You start here. We start here. We negotiate, and we get to here. That's what it looks like. Once again, when we get in the process, that's when we do those things. We can't do it long distance while they're in D.C. trading tweets and stuff back and forth. The legislative process requires committees, meeting, getting together, having discussions, and working on going on the floor, taking amendments. That's the whole process. Y'all have seen the process. It doesn't happen over Zoom calls. It happens on the floor of the House and the Senate in our committee rooms. And they need to come back here, and let's get it done. Yeah, you know, I think the people of Texas don't appreciate people running from a fight, a legislative session, whatever. 
the people of Texas want people that they paid and elected to do a job to come here and do the job. Yes, I'm sure they'll get very impatient, especially when they find out what a special session costs mm -hmm. and they got nothing for it. And you start doing that over and over. And I, I've been here for a while. I was here in 03. We had a number of these special sessions. Remember, we had people going to Ardmore and Albuquerque. At the end of the day, they have to come back. They can't stay away forever. And all they're doing is delaying the legislative process where we actually get down and get to business and work out these agreements that need to be made and get the bills passed. And what's going to happen after Friday? Are y'all going to go back into a meeting special sessions? That's up to the governor's call. You know, like I say, I, I think it'll be pretty quick. I can't tell you the day because I have not been informed of that. But I know we will have one. I would expect next week. But I don't know that for a fact. I don't see another reason to add another break in between here because some of them have already had a very long break. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have the money. You have to understand the state of Texas is required by our Constitution to have a balanced budget. Part of that balanced budget is that the Comptroller gives us a revenue estimate. And that's how much money we have to spend. Mm -hmm. So all we had to spend is what we worked with during the regular session. Since then, the economy of Texas has continued to improve. He has now revised our budget revenue estimate for the next two years. And we now have additional dollars that allows us to do the 13th check. Which is great news for the economy. It's great news for the economy. It's great news for our retired teachers. Mm -hmm. They would love to have that 13th check. They, our seniors would also love to have the property tax reductions that they can enjoy with the bills we passed. There are things that the people of Texas really need, and they're not getting it right now during this special session. Thank you. Do you want to ask a question, Bonin? Question for Dr. Bonin. Yeah. Quickly on COVID vaccinations, should the state do more to encourage vaccinations for people who are vaccinated? What, what we're seeing is a highly contagious uh, variant of uh, this virus. It spreads very easily, but it is not uh, more virulent. With respect to hospitalizations, at least 95%, if not more, of the people being admitted to the hospital have not been immunized. So it seems pretty clear that being immunized offers excellent protection. Uh, you may not become infected if you've been immunized. For those that do, they generally have uh, mild to very few symptoms. So the, the bottom line is for people that are hesitant or anxious about being immunized is that you really only have two choices. You'll either become infected or you'll become immunized. The virus is eventually going uh, to affect everyone in the population. It, it appears that what we're seeing now with respect to the increase in the hospitalizations is those people who have not been immunized are becoming infected. Some of them are getting sick enough to have to be admitted to the hospital. Those who have been immunized and frankly, most of those who've previously had the infection and recovered either have mild or no symptoms whatsoever. We need to communicate that as clearly as we possibly can and encourage people that that's how we end this pandemic. Thanks, Donald. Appreciate you. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you all.